Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Billy Crystal, Steve, you know who he is. Oh, yes. So does Rev. Owen. Uh, yeah. oh, that's how you know him as Owen? Evan! Yeah, throw Mama from the train. Okay. I mean, look, that's a good movie. He's been in some other stuff. Uh, Vicky, Danny, do you know Billy Crystal very well? He was Monsters, Inc. Oh. He was Mike Wazowski. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, geez, that's how I you know Billy. Billy from that. Saturday Night Live? Yes. City Slickers. Good nice. for you, Danny. That's going back. I loved that movie when I was a kid. Wow. For some reason, yeah. My mom uh, made me watch it because of the horses. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, hey, Danny, come over here and watch this movie about horses. Yeah. I don't know why your mom sounds like that. Yeah, she does. In yeah. my world. Why does she, she sound like one of uh, Marge Simpson is what she sounds like? <laughs> I don't have many impressions, BJ. All okay. I have is a female version of myself, and that's Marge Simpson. Does your mom have a blue beehive hair, hairdo? She does, actually. She does. Yeah. Well, you, you spot on, Steve. Hey, Danny, come yeah. over here and watch a movie with some horses. I think this is another reason. Get like, over. Oh, yeah. Get over. Come on over here. There's a whole new reason to love Billy Crystal. Uh, he was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and talked about how he likes to vape the cannabis. You do anything to calm yourself down? I vape. Oh. It's legal. It it's is legal. Oh, it's legal. Okay. Which means not as much fun. That kind of vaping. Because yeah. yeah, well, there's a senior section in the cannabis store that I frequent. And they have different strains for uh-huh. people over 65 or yeah. 70. Uh, cranky men on the porch. Does, does that? Sure. Don't hit the ball in my yard. That's a good one, too. But my cravings are different than when I was, you know... So the munchies are... Yeah, munchies are different. Now I go, wow, I I could really like some uh, soup. (laughs) I could really like me some soup. In my 20s, I would like soup, too, when I was stoned. Yeah. That is the old person's food, though. Soup? Yeah. A clam chowder? Well, any kind of soup, but clam chowder is mm, delicious. Clam chowder. But remember, it's easy because mm. there's not a lot to chew if you got your dentures oh in. Gosh. You know, that's. <laughs> I think that's probably why soup is a fair good enough. One. Then pudding. I think it's warm. I'd rather pudding. Oh, well, listen, there's nothing wrong with pudding. Do you uh, do you crave a lot of sweets when you're smoking? Oh no, I was just talking about if I had no teeth. Oh right, yeah, because he's vaping, he's got you know a whole different set of munchies. Oh, if I'm if, oh if I'm stoned, um, yeah, ice cream is the number one go to. Is it really? Absolutely. See, salty is my thing. When, uh, when uh-huh. I, and not that I not that I smoke a lot or vape a lot or do anything, but whenever I'm whenever I'm in the herb under the herbal influence, I seem to like my salty stuff. So what are you doing to get that salt intake? Oh, dude, there's, there's chips. There's chips everywhere. What nice. kind of chips you want, man? <laughs> you know, <laughs> man, getting stoned with Billy Crystal would be awesome. Yeah. I, I think just, you're right. I, would, I would just yell Owen the, the whole time. Yeah, that probably would be annoying for him after a while. Yeah. Especially, especially, I don't know if that's like the one big thing that he would like to be remembered for is just that one particular moment. Vicky could reenact the scene from when Harry met Sally. I bet oh. he'd like that while stoned. See, that would be kind of fun. But I was also thinking just all the Monsters Inc. quotes. Put that thing back where it came from or so help me. Nothing. No. See, that's I, mean, I watched I that movie. It. I watched it's it way back in the day. It's a great movie. It is, but I, it was way back in the day. John Goodman was in it too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he says, uh, Billy Crystal's best in The Princess Bride? Yes, it's oh, Miracle Max. Yeah. Have fun storming the castle. Yeah. It, he, I mean, he didn't have a large role, but it was a fun role. It was, it was a great yeah. role. Yeah. It's, uh, but, uh, you know, of course, he was, he, was, he was groundbreaking because I think he was, like, the first gay character soap. I ever knew. Yep, on Soap. Yeah. Someone mm-hmm. texted Soap was his favorite, yeah. their favorite. He was great on soap. I mean, he was. I mean, you know, all the stuff that he did. You know, and, and of course the uh, the Live Aid was that not Live Aid Comics Relief. Comic, yeah, yeah, Comic Relief. Yeah, mm-hmm. him, him, Whoopi, and Robin Williams. Uh, yeah, Billy was a uh, Billy's the man. And now I know he's vaping. He's vaping, getting stoned with everybody. I might have to do the vape. I don't mean I, I might have to start vaping. I thought you were doing the butt suppositories. Yeah, what happened happened to that? I got to get them first, all right? (laughs) Apparently, in order to get them, I have to go uh, to the back of the building. Yes, as it were. I got to go through the rear entrance to get the... 
the marijuana suppositories. I didn't think this morning Thank would you. start with us talking about our favorite Billy Crystal movies and, and performances. Yeah, yeah. Right? it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to look and see what uh, what else has been what's he been on uh, that we know. Oh, he's been a bunch of things, man. Yeah, yeah, he really cars. Has. He was in Cars, the uh, the the uh, animated, animated one. Thing. Yeah, I didn't even know that. A uh, couple of Disney movies for him. Yeah, damn, look at him running scared. Oh man, I forgot about that movie. Damn, yeah, I'm looking at his. Uh, yeah, he's. Uh, well, he's. he's, <laughs> he's a him I forgot guy. about Gregory Hines. Ah, oh, he was good too. In Cars, he was basically his Monsters Inc. character. They just made him into a car. Hmm. Oh, that's fun. That's so cute. <laughs> Gregory Hines. I love that. Steve's just gone on to another actor. I came back. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> My focus is just on Billy Crystal. Yeah, that's right. I know, but I'll be like, oh, Gregory Hines. Does anybody say, oh, Gregory Hines? But no. You, no, of course not. And I didn't think you, I would, but Running Scared was a fun movie. All right. I don't Gregory know. Hines was a pretty awesome actor at that time. I, I don't remember much about Gregory Hines. I don't either. Yeah. I, I can't say either or about Gregory. I don't remember much about him. I know who he is. Uh, and that's who um, a lot of people thought that. Didn't they keep calling the old coach for the uh, UW basketball team? Didn't they, didn't they call him Gregory yes, Hines? Yeah. Lorenzo Romar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all I, that's, how about that's all I know about Gregory Hines is they used to say our wow. coach looked like him. <laughs> I, was, I don't know much about I, I don't know much else about him. Huh. I mean, I remember him, but I don't really remember what he's done. I, well, running scared. Running scared. Kangaroo Court. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. Anything. Tap. Oh, I think I do remember Tap. Yeah. All right. He was a tap dancer. Oh, that's right. He was a tap dancer. That's right. I do remember that now about him. Great. All right. Perfect. He was a tap dancer. This is what you call morning excitement right here. You had to bring up Gregory Hines. I just gives a flying like, fish about Gregory Hines. And it was a passing comment. You decided to focus on it. So clearly you gave a flying fish about Gregory Hines. Yeah, I guess I did. What about fish? Yeah. Uh, well, you can't I like say, salmon. You can't say the other F word, my friend. <laughs> I, 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 I really wanted to drop the bomb. But, uh, hey, I got to talk about this flight attendant um, who... Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> this really is a, a thing? A flight attendant breastfed a stranger's baby on a flight. Wow. Well, Steve's going to tell you all about this. <laughs> With consent. With consent. Yes. He's got the news for you at 617. On the rock. Gregory Hines was a part of it, too. Oh, was he? Yeah. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. He's the best newscaster named Steve uh, in this room. Right now, here's Steve Miggs with the news. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to Kia Up You All for giving us news and sports and happy National Vanilla Cupcake Day. Oh, I love vanilla cupcakes. They're my favorite. Okay, good. I'm glad that I'm not the only one that thinks they're the best of cupcakes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather that than a chocolate cupcake. Yeah, I mean, I won't, I won't turn down a chocolate cupcake, but if oh, vanilla's there, I'm taking it. I'm get that damn chocolate cupcake. Get it away, away from, from me. me. What about vanilla with vanilla frosting? Oh, yeah, that's the best. Why don't, I call that white on white, baby. All right. Well, there you go. Happy National Vanilla Cupcake Day. Of course, we don't have any vanilla cupcakes. Why? A, we poorly planned this day. Another Vicky failure. Agreed. Why is it mine? Sarah brings the treats. It's another, your daughter. Yeah, yeah I right. blame her. Yeah. Yeah. It's She's another right. Vicky failure. I'm then she sorry. can blame Joey. Yeah. No, I'm still waiting for that mac and cheese. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah mac and cheese happen. day, we'll get it. Yeah. If there ever is one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's talk about this mom who ran out of formula for her infant during a, an, a flight. Uh, she was in the Philippines, and she's like, oh, crap, I don't have any more formula for my baby. I can't breastfeed her. And that's when not all heroes wear capes, BJ. One of the flight attendants stepped in and said, I'll breastfeed your baby. Wow. The flight attendant's name is Patricia. She's 24 years old. She's a first-time mom. And she said in a Facebook post, I heard an infant's cry. And it's a cry that'll make you want to do anything for help. I approached the mom and asked if everything was okay. I tried to tell her to feed the hungry child, and she was running out. Of, she was crying and said that she ran out of formula milk. Passengers started looking and staring at the tiny, fragile, crying infant. Oh, nice writing, right? So then she took the mom to a private part of the plane so that she could be there while the baby was fed. Patricia describes herself as a breastfeeding advocate, which is funny because that's what I describe myself as as well. <laughs> oh yeah. And she has a nine-month baby at home, and the mom sincerely thanked her. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that, that made that made sense. I was like, wow, she's just on command, but she has her own baby. She is breastfeeding. It made sense that she could breastfeed the other kid. One person says, I could tell by the tone you guys think that breastfeeding another baby is weird. It's not. 
It was called wet nursing. Yes, that's true. Yeah, I did not know that. Back and in the day, yeah. I still think it's kind of weird. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just not used to hearing a, a flight attendant breastfeeding a passenger's baby. It is. I mean, it's weird today because of the advent of formula. Yes. So, But, uh, yeah, it used to happen, uh, I don't know, probably what, in the early part of the 20th century. I'm sure. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, as far as they happen a lot. Learn something new today. Yeah. Could you imagine being on the plane just, like, putting on an open call? This is the captain speaking. Does yeah. anyone have a breast that we could use to feed a baby? I do. Of course you do. Yeah. Thanks. That's great. Uh, this is a great story involving a man and a woman that were arrested for trying to smuggle meth across the border over in the Texas area. The two were trying to cross a bridge in a vehicle around 6 p.m., and that's when a drug-sniffing dog said, um, I'm noticing some drugs. Well, the dog didn't say that, but... Oh, yeah. dog. Are you really? It wasn't Scooby? <laughs> it's, hey, it's a lynx. <laughs> Wait, that's... Crap. That's Wait, that's Shaggy. That's Shaggy. Yeah. Sorry. Getting my characters mixed up. Well, anyways, the dog freaked out. They're like, whoa, something's going on. So they decided to search these uh, individuals. The 37-year-old man was hiding less than a pound of meth. Oh, boy. In his crotch area. Oh, nice. But even better, the 26-year-old woman hiding also less than a pound of meth in her private area. Oh, you mean like uh, up there? That's the vibe I'm getting, BJ. She voluntarily removed it, according to the officers. Oh, boy. And then there was a third person. Who looked at them and said, I got nothing. And he was released. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, I got no, I don't know where to put anything, buddy. I wonder if he knew that they were smuggling drugs. Yeah. And he was just like one of their buddies just going along for the ride. Well, that would suck if you didn't. I mean, he was released. Yeah. That would suck if you didn't. He probably, that's what he probably says, like, I have my, they're idiots. Like, you son of a. Yeah. Man, what are you guys doing? That we're going on a little trip. Yeah. I thought, you know what? Throw him in jail, officer. Man, you think you have a bad at your job? Maybe you work in sales and you have a boss that's just being a little unreasonable? Here is a story that will let you realize that things are not nearly as bad as it is for a company in China. They're a home renovation company and their sales staff. This is an interesting way to motivate their sales staff to the point where the, the manager and people running the business were arrested because of this. They forced their sales staff to eat cockroaches and drink urine if they missed sales targets. <laughs> Wow. And that's not it. And they handled this on text. They would text their employees saying, look, if you don't do this, you're going to have to drink toilet water. You're going to have to have your head shaved or sell condoms on the street. Jeez, Alec Baldwin just wouldn't let you have a cup of coffee if you didn't do well in sales. This is really bad. What is it about selling condoms on the street that is ridiculous? Yeah. Selling condoms is for not closers. Condoms here. Wow. I was yeah. just thinking the same thing. Condoms, yeah. Who needs condoms? Condoms, yeah. Taking a rod dog and we got condoms here. Rod dog and condoms, yeah. Yeah, and the text it says if the sales goal has not been met by the end of the month, the team leader will have to eat three cockroaches for each failed sale. Cockroaches, yeah. Cockroaches and condoms. So people are wondering, well, why the hell do these workers let authorities know that this is what's going on? Steve, why the hell do these workers let this happen without... Why? Thank you, BJ. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Apparently, they were afraid because the company owed them a couple of months of back pay, and they oh. feared that it would be withheld if they dined out their bosses. Well, you're working for a good company where you've got to eat cockroaches and sell condoms Drink because urine. they haven't paid you yet. Condoms here. Boy, you know what? I wasn't at war with China because Bill Gates said they've done a lot for poverty lately, but now I'm back on war with China. Wow. Yeah, I'm back at war with China. Uh, bummer news in the world of soccer yesterday as the yeah. Sounders are done. The playoffs are over for them. The Portland Timbers yeah. move on to the next round to take on either Sporting KC or Real Salt Lake in the West Finals. Uh, they won the game. Then it goes to the penalty case because it was a tie because of the aggregate thing, yeah. and then they ended up losing that. So that's very unfortunate, but it was a crazy second half. And uh, props to the Sounders, though. I mean, at the beginning of the first half of the season, nobody would have even thought they would be playing in the playoffs. So yeah. it, was, it was a nice run, but it sucks that they had to lose to Portland. Uh, baseball. We got some baseball news, BJ, with the what? Mariners. What? Big trade happened with the Mariners. Say goodbye to Mike Zanino and Guillermo Heredia. They've been part of a five-year, a five-player deal with uh, Tampa Bay Rays for speedy outfielder and leadoff hitter Malik Smith. Whoa. He's 25 years old. He had 40 stolen bases this year. Hit 296. Also had the uh, he t- had the tie for the major league lead with 10 triples. And also had 40 RBI. So not a bad player. No. Young player, too. See, finally, they're doing what I'm telling them to do. And, and that's to get Malik Smith. Get speedy people. Get speedy people. They are starting. You know what? They, they're, I like this move. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you kept wanting Mike Zanino to do something. And yeah, he had a... a, a he was a power hitter, but boy, oh boy, what a rough last season. I mean, what he back 201? Yeah. So, moving on. 
welcome Malik Smith to the Seattle Mariners on their way to winning the World Series. Now that, is, that. That, that, that is, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this. You got Dean Gordon, you got Gene Segura, you got Smith. Yeah, you're right. There's some speed going on with That's, the Mariners. You need that. I'm, I tell you that, boy, I like I like this if they're going to go in this direction. I like it. I hope uh, the Seahawks are able to have uh, Chris Carson play this Sunday. Big game uh, this Sunday against uh, the L.A. Rams in Los Angeles. You can watch it on CBS at 125 on Sunday. Uh, he's questionable. He did not practice. Uh, Chris Carson, the running back. Uh, he might be ready by Sunday, but there's also a chance that they might not play him as a precaution because as soon as they're done with this game, Thursday night football against the Green Bay Packers, and some believe that might be even more important because of the wild card stuff. Yeah, it'll it look the chance of, that will be an important game because look, I mean, if we beat if we beat the Rams, congratulations to us, amazing. But I'd hate to see him get hurt again in a, in a, if we didn't win the game. Can't play, of course. You got Mike Davis, you got Rashad Penny. They'll have to step it up. All right, uh, this is a bummer as well. Uh, who knows if DJ Fluker is going to be able to play on the offensive line. You know, he had that calf injury. He sat out on practice on Wednesday, and according to Pete Carroll, he was a little more sore on Wednesday than he was earlier in the week, so that's not a good sign. Uh, uh, Bradley McDo- McDougal also did not practice uh, as well, so he's a uh, man. Hopefully they can rest up and be ready to go, but this, this is going to be a rough go without those guys. Yep. Uh, Cougs, number eight Cougs, they're going to be taking on Colorado in Colorado. That's tomorrow at 1230. Huskies aren't playing this weekend, and as far as weather, 45 degrees and rain, and thank you, Oregon State University for news and sports. All right, then. One person says, BJ, this is just the beginning with the Mariners. I'm calling it right now. You won't even recognize the team next year. It's going to be a fire sale. Uh, but isn't a fire sale a bad thing? And I yeah, feel like this is actually a good not trade. a fire sale. Uh, and l- I will tell the texture this, um, and not to get too deep in the in the woods. But what the Red Sox showed is that if you have speed and great defense, which is what they had in the outfield, and they had some speed out there as well, they were able to disrupt a lot. Of, they, they they were able to really ruin a pitcher's game. Mm-hmm. And I've said for years, the Mariners don't have a park that has a lot of offense. But if you get a lot of speedy guys that can run around and manufacture runs, is what they call it in baseball, play that small ball. You you can win a lot of ball games. And I'll tell you, the Red Sox, world champions as they were, again, only split the series with the Mariners where they were here. They don't have a winning record at Safeco Field, even in all their World Series seasons, because Safeco's not an offensive park. You just So I think if they could build a team that knows how to get a lot of runs with a lot of not, of, you know, not a lot of offense, they're going to be really good at home. And I think Smith is the perfect addition to this. A speedy guy stealing bases, getting triples like that, you don't need, uh, you know, you don't need that big, big offense when you've got a guy that can make something out of nothing, which is what he does. And he's young, and they got him you know, for a few years before he hits the free agency, oh, yeah. too. That's a good thing. So. Yeah, that's a great Speed thing. and pitching, baby. Dude, every walk. World Series. Every walk, every hit batsman, every single becomes a double when you got a guy that can steal 40 bases, and then he puts himself in scoring position. Now, it's not a fire sale. I think that is a hell of a move for a team that, you know, doesn't have the kind of money to go blow, you know, on the luxury tax like a team like the Red Sox or the Nationals do. They just don't. Mm-hmm. I I like it, man. Let's see what happens. He's a young dude. I like it. I like it, Steve. We got a new. We got a new pitching coach. They, they got rid. They got some real. They got some fancy an, an yeah. analytics guy. Mm-hmm. I. That's not a fire sale, friends. Yeah, it's exciting. Two U.S. Marine Corps pilots, they have been grounded and are under investigation after a recent digitally mapped flight path over Southern California appeared to take the shape of a penis and testicles. What? All right. Googling Marine uh, penis. penis right? Oh, there, right there. It is. Oh, my gosh. These are my two favorite Marines ever. It is so awesome. And they even flew out of the tip of the penis like when they were done. Oh, my it. goodness. You're right. Yeah. Pew. They were awesome. That is yeah, impressive. <laughs> this was reported in late October. <laughs> they did a great job. They did. I mean, uh, there's a little bit of a yeah. serious separation between uh, the left and the right boy, but you know well, what? You know what? You got to do what you got to do. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Navy admitted that one of its aircraft drew penises in the sky over Washington State last year, and the Marines did not want to be outdone. I remember that. I mean, we talked about those guys. It yeah. happened here in That's the right. Northwest. <laughs> See that? So we started some guy to do this. Oh, I understand I that you're not nothing. A, I understand that it's frowned upon, but who are they hurting? Yeah, I hope nothing happens. For Christ, who does that really hurt if they're just flying around with all the things that like the Blue Angels and those folks do? There's no way just doing a, a, a path of a penis hurts anybody. I feel like there should be like a contest now. You can yeah. have like you know the the military 
Olympics, and it's one of the one of the contests is who can draw a penis better in the sky. Yeah, the pilots have been I feel grounded. Like the Marines might have, of course, they have. Yeah, they've been grounded. But come on, seriously, let's not waste any time with this. That was a it was a fun joke. I'm trying to remember. Do we have an image of the Navy dong? I wonder who did a better dong. Oh, who did the better dong? Marines or Navy? This yeah. is where bragging rights start. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're find absolutely a- right. This is a, the Marines did a good one, man. I mean, the fact that they had the part where it's shooting out of the top of a, the dong is... Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's oh, awesome. I'm going to have... Oh, boy. Oh, that's a good one, too, though. It is. Mm. See, that one's in the sky as opposed to just being drawn via the, the map. Yeah, you're right. So I think that one's a lot better, even though, I mean, it it kind of looks like a top hat. You know, though, you're right. I mean, as far as them doing it with the, the sky stuff, I think that, that gets some extra points. But I think the Marines get more points because of they they, yeah. did a, they, they capped off the, 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 the top top part, and then yeah. they also shot out of it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> so Both are good in their own ways. I say, look, we don't have enough penis flight patterns out there. I say we congratulate both Every- Marines. In the Navy, every penis is beautiful, and of course, I'm biased. My brother's in the Navy, so I would lean more towards Navy if it was, if it was super close. But I got to give this one to the Marines. All I right, feel like they're, they're stronger dong drawers. <laughs> wow! Don't tell your I don't, I, 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 I don't even want to let your brother hear that. That's sacrilege. Although somebody says, you know, the, the people in Washington did it first. Do they get? credit for being oh yeah right yeah no doubt about it they get credit for being the originals and you know what innovation's a great thing the marines innovated by really making a much more realistic looking penis and testicles it's a great day see that this is why america's great you don't see any other countries doing this (laughs) that's right that we know of yeah yesterday steve he did get this one wrong on what river is the Grand Coulee Dam? River Kwai. No. That's it. Mississippi. No. The uh, River of Deceit. No. You know, there's a, a river in our area. Columbia. Oh, you know it now. I'm aware. All right. <laughs> you want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We'll play Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney. And right, my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy. My job is to help you to, to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, what benefits it's going to have for you, and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choose the right chapter. Love sports? Love culture? Well, I've got a brand new podcast called Take Line from Crooked Media, hosted by me, Jason Concepcion, and two-time WNBA champion Renee Montgomery. From the games to the players to the issues happening both on and off the court, we'll be tackling the important political and social issues happening in sports head on. New episodes drop every Tuesday, so follow and subscribe on Radio.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.